Welcome to Business Studies Part 2. In this lesson we're just going to look at the different types of business and the different ways they are distinguished from each other. Uh, the first type, or well, the first way we distinguish between different types of businesses is based on their size. Uh, there are typically, traditionally, three types of business, the small, the medium and large, but over the last few years uh, we've added what we call the SOHO business, which stands for small office, home office business, which is typically people who set up a business in their own home, um, running things like with a web presence or online business or basic consulting stuff that doesn't actually require um, a premises to operate out of and um, typically has no more than two or three employees, if any at all. Uh, the vast majority of SOHO businesses don't have any employees. A second way we distinguish business is based on their geographical spread. Uh, three levels are uh, local, basically means the business operates only in the local area. Examples of this would be uh, a corner shop or a retail store in the main street of Barrel that only has a presence in the local area and serves customers on their local area. Some of these businesses uh, may also have um, a web presence where they sell online, that makes them then a national business, which means they have operations around uh, Australia or around the country that they're operating in. Um, examples of these types of business, uh, well-known ones would be Admire or um, David Jones department stores, which have a presence in every large city throughout Australia. Um, to be considered a national business, you don't have to have a presence through every city, you just basically have to have um, presence several places around the country. Uh, businesses that also operate overseas, uh, examples that would be included like Telstra or Broken Hill Prospecting, known as BHP, um, have operations all around the world. Um, Well-known foreign companies that are global businesses include companies like Nike or Apple or Microsoft. A third way to distinguish the types of businesses is the industry sector that they operate in. Uh, for example, whether they operate in manufacturing, like Toyota, uh, making cars, or making a product, whether they operate in services, which would be somewhere like Telstra, which is actually delivering internet access or telephone services, whether they operate in distribution, which is basically transport and moving products around, uh, for example, Lindsay Fox Trucking, whether they operate in retail, which is basically selling products in storefronts, or, or online, again, the aforementioned examples of David Jones or Myers or eBay, which is an online retail store. And lastly, the distinguishing types of their legal structure. There are three types of legal structure in companies in Australia. The first is by sole trader, which is a owner operated, typically only has one person in the ownership structure. Um, very small, typically most small companies are sole traders. Or second type would be a partnership where one or more of the sole trader type uh, owners join together. Uh, and forms a partnership where they have joint ownership of the company. Um, there are examples, for example, lawyers that can have up to several hundred partners, but most partners have no more than about five. And the last type of company is a limited liability company. Um, you've probably heard the expression PTY limited, that is what proprietary limited basically refers to a limited liability company. Whereas sole trader and partnerships don't exist as a separate legal in entity from their owners, a limited liability company is a separate legal entity. So for example, if you wanted to sue um, the owners of a sole trader or a partnership, you sue those people directly, whereas you can't sue the owners of a limited liability company, you sue the company itself. Um, the term limited liability means that the, com the liability for any debts or any outstanding payments is limited to the company itself, not to the owners. So, for example, if the limited liability company goes bankrupt, you can't then chase the owners for any outstanding debts. Whereas a sole trader or a partnership, the owners of those companies are liable for any outstanding debts personally. So those people could lose their houses or any income they have uh, if their companies are being sued. Um, Briefly talking about micro businesses or the Soho business, they now represent 82% of all non-manufacturing small businesses in Australia. 58% of these are sole traders and or partnerships. Um, the reason why non-manufacturing is mentioned here is that setting up a manufacturing business is not really viable uh, on a small scale. The cost of machinery, the cost of um, the plant and the factories that you need to set up manufacturing tend not to make it worthwhile. They tend to be much larger scale. Uh, second type businesses, 
micro businesses, they employ up to 31% of all people employed in the private sector. This means they're a huge employer across Australia. 54% um, of these, however, so over half of them have no employees whatsoever. Um, so very large sector of the business. What that means is there are very numerous. There are thousands and thousands of micro businesses throughout Australia. Um, they are also tend to be dominated by women or young people seeking self-employment or people who are retrenched from their previous employment. It's a very common occurrence for people when they've taken a retrenchment package uh, to set up their own small company, often dealing with the, the clients that they used to deal with when they worked for a large company. Um, local businesses, basically remember that they are restricted by their geographic spread and they really only serve the surrounding area. People might travel in to go to the businesses, so for example, Berrima on the weekends, a lot of people come from Sydney to shop there, but they're really only serving the, the surrounding area. Um, national businesses have multiple operations in one country and often known throughout its country. Again, we use the example of Maya or um, David Jones. Global businesses have operations around the world, also commonly known as transnational corporation or a TNC. Trans means across, national means countries, and corporation is a limited liability company. So a company who's across many countries. All right, in your textbooks, to complete this activity or using your textbooks or internet research, I want you to find two examples of businesses with a local presence for each of the following categories. Uh, for example, in the Southern Highlands here, you're looking for a small business, you'd be looking at someone like a plumber or a cafe. Um, international example would be someone like McDonald's, which is an international company that has a local presence in this area. When you've completed that, uh, page 27 of the textbook, please use complete the Billabong snapshot and the link for the social responsibility section of that is listed below.